Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Children First. This program is brought to you because of Cable Access Network Television and Maryville Academy. And I'm Sister Catherine Ryan. I'm privileged to serve as the Executive Director of Maryville Academy and as your host this evening. And I'm here with our guest, whom I, I know you're going to be excited to hear, Carrie Alani. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you, Sister. It's my honor. Carrie uh, works at Maryville Academy uh, as the director of our Children's Health Care Center. But before we come to that, we have a journey that we want to take with Carrie to tell you how she came to this oh. wonderful work. So, Carrie, could you tell us first, how did sure. you get started in your careers? You know what? Probably the same way you did, sister. You got a call. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, my, my life is pretty much of a, of a calling as well. I um, um, knew at an early age that I wanted to work with kids who were medically fragile and um, needed extra help and wasn't really sure how to do that. And um, before I knew it, I had an opportunity to work in long-term care for a pediatric facility and um, became a nurse's aide and fell in love with a little girl who became my sister and um, journeyed along with my family through the ups and downs of caring for a medically fragile child and became a nurse and just, you know, ended up uh, really trying to be an advocate for medically fragile children, their families, and helping nurses to understand um, the, the journeys these, these families are on is, is truly their own and very unique. Now we're going to come back to that in a moment, uh, Carrie, but uh, you also, uh, on the way, also uh, went into journalism, didn't you? I did, I did. I was um, a health reporter here at um, NBC here in Chicago and also did some work for ABC TV in Chicago and the Better Government Association and then became um, more of a print writer and was working with USA Today and a nursing spectrum. So always trying to do something to further nursing and, um, you know, be a part of, of nursing, but yet with maybe a different flair. And then at some point you went back into full-time nursing? I did. I never really left it, and um, opportunity kind of knocked, as it always does, and I answered and said I'm going to leave the journalism world and go back into patient care, and here I am. All right. And we, we did just bring you to Maryville within the last year, but before yes. you came to Maryville, where were you yes, serving? Yes, I, um, I was the former director of, of pediatric services for Hospice and Palliative Care of Northeastern Illinois. It's a wonderful organization, nonprofit, um, that was launching a pediatric palliative care program, and that's, that's a program for uh, kids who are medically fragile, have lots of things going on, and want or need specialized comfort care and um, unique services. So we were really, I was blessed to be able to be there and, and launch this program, get it going, and um, kind of the same thing happened. I, I really wanted to expand our program to include transitional care, respite care, and um, that um, just wasn't in the plan at the time. And I got a call from Maryville and said, hey, come on, we're doing this, come on over. And we're delighted you came. I'm thrilled to be here. So let me begin, uh, Carrie, for those of us who are not in the healthcare field all the time, mm -hmm. what do you mean when you say medically fragile children? That's a good question. Um, medically fragile is a term that is used in um, medicine and nursing to describe kids who have various uh, chronic, sometimes acute, then chronic illnesses. Um, in most cases, these are kids who will not likely reach adulthood. There's something life-threatening, life-limiting about the disease or the dis disorder that they have. But some of them do uh, grow to be adults as well. They, ca they can, yeah. Some kids with some diagnoses can grow, grow up and um, make it to adulthood. It's usually not without, it's, it's, um, the journey can be kind of rocky and roller coaster like but um, we do have lots of great stories. All right, and now in your former work, you said you were in palliative and hospice care. I was. So can you explain what that is and then tell us how what you're doing now is different? Okay, that is great because, um, yeah, actually the, the, the children I took care of at, um, at Hope's Friends, which is hospice and palliative care, are not unlike the kids we see at the Maryville Children's Healthcare Center. The difference is that we're seeing them in a contained setting. When um, I was with hospice, we saw these kids, same kinds of kids, same kinds of, of problems, um, but we saw them in their home. So this is a place where um, the kids can receive palliative care or comfort care along with aggressive treatment. So um, we may have children who have severe cerebral palsy and have lots of um, nervous system issues, seizures, feeding problems, so on and so forth. There's an underlying level of suffering that the child has and we can go ahead and treat all the medical problems but also have to look at 
how can we help ease the suffering of this this child and in, in turn their family so it, it involves counseling um, sometimes integrative therapies like aromatherapy uh, massage therapy but also a good knowledge and use of the medications that are out there to make suffering um, as least as possible. And so you are helping the children in their own homes? Right. Okay. So coming to Maryville is a unique opportunity because um, as you know it's it's that kind of training hasn't existed for, for very long and we're excited to bring palliative care to the, the Maryville Children's Health Care Center. We're really excited about it. We're launching it um, this, this spring. We're going to have all the nurses go through a specialized training program, become certified, and it'll, it'll really um, bring us to a position of um, no other facility will have this highly trained staff. So we're really, really thrilled about that. And the, the Children's Health Care Center, our, our viewers might not know, but this is one of the newer programs mm -hmm. that Maryville Academy has begun. It's located in the city of Chicago and it is to serve uh, families by helping them with the care of their children until the children are ready to go home. We have no intention of having the children stay with us forever. We want to help families be able to take their children home. Did I say that correctly? You, without a doubt. Now um, tell us about the okay, program. Okay, the program is great. It, um, we have two, two reasons a child could come to us. One is the most popular reason, and that is transitional care, meaning that the child is uh, in the hospital, um, stable and ready to come home. However, there's not a place for that child to come home to. Either the house isn't ready, the family isn't trained, maybe they're waiting for nursing care to be um, uh, started and paid for, and uh, the, the child is languishing in the hospital. So that, um, of course, costs a lot of money, and it's also very traumatic for kids, not to mention uh, really hard on siblings and family. So the Children's Healthcare Center is one of uh, two such places. Uh, we are the only ones in Chicago who can take care of kids for this transitional period of time, meaning they come from the hospital to our agency, and while they're there, we get them ready to um, go home. So families come and train. We have uh, two wonderful care by parent rooms where families can sleep, and um, their over their over um, sight is done by nursing um, personnel, so they can learn firsthanded how to take care of their kid, how to how to make sure that they are the absolute expert that they need to be before they take that child home. So that's the most common way is transitional care. Let me stop you for one second because we have a photo we'd like to oh, share. Uh, and this is a young lad who came to us at. Uh, Four pounds. Yes. Uh, and uh, He's when, he went, for it. when he went home about a year and a half later, mm -hmm. he, need, he had a lot of medical issues that needed. Right. He was a healthy uh, Ahmed who was seen here in the photo. Yes. And, and you can tell he has um, uh, near his neck, he has a uh, plastic airway. We call that a tracheostomy. And um, that is because he had trouble um, keeping his airway open so he could not really breathe. Um, he could breathe on his own as long as he had an opening. And a lot of our kids here at the Maryville Children's Healthcare Center do have such, um, such modalities to help them breathe. Um, and those are the things that the parents have to learn. They have to be really comfortable in taking care of a child with um, devices and machinery and pumps and hoses and tubes. And it, it can be very, very frightening. Imagine being a first-time parent and um, you know not being able to go home with just a diaper bag. You have oxygen and a million other things you have to carry with you. So that that is, uh, it, it's going to be really daunting. Well, thank you for uh, for adding that. And now let me let you continue with the oh, other kinds of okay, ways sure, that children yes. come. So besides tra transitional care, we have um, respite care, and that is something we're, we're we're always passionate about. Respite care is um, just that. It is a respite for families who have um, a burden. They have um, a big job on their plates. They have to take care of a child with lots of medical needs and they have to do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year with very, very little help. And luckily there is uh, a way that our um, federal government has funded families to get a break and it's, it's through um, a waiver program and also through some private funding where folks who have kids who do have medical needs and the family does need a break, they can give us a call and we can um, arrange all the paperwork and the child can come and stay with us for um, up to two weeks. So let me see if I heard you correctly, Carrie. If uh, I'm a parent, uh, my view our viewers are parents, their children mm -hmm. have these uh, medical needs, complex medical needs, mm -hmm. they're, they're giving their whole heart and soul to caring for the children mm -hmm. and they're really worn out 
and they need a bit of a break. Mm -hmm. uh, you're saying that we can help with respite care Absolutely. and we can help them apply for the funding for that. Absolutely. We, uh, we do that all the time. We work with families very, very closely to not only um, work with the state agencies, but also help them access some um, grant funding that's available. And we have a family um, currently um, who's, who's with us right now because of that. So although we can't guarantee funding, we can promise you that we will help you with the paperwork to apply for. Absolutely. I think if there's one thing parents need to know, and that is that there's, there's help out there. And Maryville is um, an amazing organization that has stepped forward to, t to perform this kind of care, to help fund it, to help support it. And uh, it, it, it's so needed, and yet so many people don't know it exists. So um, fortunately, we're able to do it. We're, we're blessed. Well, that's pretty exciting, I must say. And uh, we're, we're excited, Carrie, that you're leading us in this effort. Would you talk a little bit about what you think some of the biggest challenges are for the children and then for their families when, you're, when we're helping them mm -hmm. and getting them ready to go home? That's a really good question. Um, these kids, for the most part, and we see children between the ages of birth to 21, so we see a, a, a wide spectrum of ages and a wide spectrum of prognoses and diagnoses. You know, everybody's, everyone's challenge is, is so unique. We've got some kids that just struggle to breathe. We've got some families that are just struggling to find a home. We've got some who um, home is not what they want it to be. Maybe it's, um, maybe they're um, a DCFS ward or maybe they are, um, you know, a, a, um, a caregiver, and maybe um, mom and dad can't take care, and maybe grandma and grandpa are primary caregivers. So the challenges are so unique, and that's where the team comes in, and we're really able to connect with that family, uh, assess what they really need, and then don't make those decisions for them, of course, but um, offer them choices and ride alongside them as they, as they journey something that is very unique. And as we're doing this, what do you find that parents most or, or other family members are most asking us to help them with? Probably training. Training, uh, support, how can I do more for my child? How can I learn more? How can I keep my child out of the hospital? A lot of times uh, they don't know what they don't know, and so they don't realize there are resources out there to help them, and we help connect connect them to um, early intervention or a community resource, or maybe it's... Um, a spiritual family that they have, maybe their local church, and find out that they're so busy in the day-to-day -day activities of caring for their child that there's all these people out there who really do want to help, and the world is a really good place, and there are people who are extending a hand. You, all you have to do is, is take the time, step back, and, 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 and look, and they're there, and that's really what our staff hel helps to, them to do. And. Uh when you speak about good people out there, reminds me of, of, of the many stories you can tell. Uh, we have one young lad, Dwayne, who has a pretty mm -hmm. special story. Yes. Can you tell our viewers a bit about him and I then can. I'll show a picture? I can. Dwayne is a very special young man. Um, he never planned, you know, to have an accident, an incident like that, but he was a healthy 14-year-old who experienced a gunshot wound to his head and immediately his life was changed, his family's life was changed. Uh, he had uh, recently lost his mom and his dad, so he, he's been through a lot of loss. Um, he came to us in a very fragile state. Uh, you know, since then we've, we've done a lot of therapy, to send him off for therapy, given, them a lot, given him a lot of nurturing, and the staff has uh, kind of adopted him in a way. He's kind of our, uh, of our mayor as some will call him. Um, but he is making a wonderful recovery. We're really, really excited. And there's a picture of Duane, along with, uh, with the folks at, at, the, at the unit. He, uh, he experienced um, a gunshot wound through his head and then had some, uh, a, a stroke activity and was paralyzed, um, is now regaining use of one side of his hand and one side of his body rather and learning to speak again so it's been really really exciting we're we're really really pleased with his progress and and again he's a transitional care kid so he's here while we get him ready for home and home is we're not sure where exactly home is going to be but somewhere with his auntie and somewhere where they're, they're going to be safe that's wonderful and one more thing i'm going to show the picture one more time He's holding up a newspaper. You want yes. to tell our viewers why? Yes. Oh, it's why. so exciting. Yes. Well, um, the Sun Times had recently run a story about him and his his uh, experience, 
his never ending um, uh, just hope that he has for the future for himself and for uh, his family life and he's an he's anxious to get on with his life so we were really really thrilled that the Sun Times did a story about him and um, the letters and phone calls are still coming in he's a celebrity of sorts that's his, he's the front page story on that Sun yeah and, right. and he was thrilled and uh, speaking of the wonderful people who are out there uh, a special friend of the Children's Health Care Center and of Dwayne uh, is a uh, Big Cat Williams, oh, the my former goodness. Chicago Bears player. Yes. I want to say something about sure. his wonderful... Big, Big Cat is uh, is just a wonderful guy and uh, has been, just just really enveloped him in his, uh, in his big Chicago Bear arms. And uh, when he heard of Dwayne's story, he immediately acted, came out to see him. Um, just, just amazing, just an amazing spirit, an amazing um, persona. Yeah. So a lot of wonderful people. W wonderful. Our All children are wonderful, and these wonderful people come to them. Absolutely. So, Carrie, if a viewer were thinking tonight, maybe I'd need to get the services of the Children's Health Care mm -hmm. Center for my child or a member of my family, what would they do? Well, you just need to call. We're here. We're, we're here to help. Um, our number is 773-205-3606. You can call us at any time, day or night. We're there 24 hours. Um, and just call and tell us your story. We're, we're, we're ready. And who's going to answer that phone? Well, if it's not me, <laughs> it'll be one of our nurses. And you just let them know, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I heard about you. I need some help. And they will take it from there. And let's give the number again. Oh, sh sure. It's 773-205-3606. That's the Children's Health Care Center. Okay, and then when they, when someone calls, they let's say they talk to you, mm -hmm. and it seems appropriate for uh, care from the Children's Health Care Center, what happens next? Uh, it's actually very simple. We just plan to meet. Either I'll meet them in their homes, or if they want to come and take a tour, that would, that would be great. And then we just talk about um, next steps. It's really up to each in individual family what, what that journey is going to look like. So if they want to come for a couple of days, maybe it's a respite care case, or maybe they're thinking that their child... Um, will be having a hospitalization and they're not going to be able to take care of that child immediately after they're stable, um, then that's the time for, for them to mention to their doctor or their nurse in the hospital that we want to talk about transitional care. And so they come to see, and, and uh, you mentioned that families are welcome to come and tour, and oh, yeah. I think you also mentioned, but I'd like to have you emphasize, if a parent wants to stay overnight and mm -hmm. be closer to his or her child, uh, at least some time in the beginning, maybe till they're comfortable with mm -hmm. all of this, uh, we have accommodations. We do, absolutely. Unlike um, some places where, you know, families have to be housed elsewhere off campus, we are very lucky to have two beautiful care by parent units, or uh, care by parent rooms, I should say, on the unit, where uh, it's a private a private bedroom, um, families can make it their own, they can decorate it if they want, but they're only steps away from their child. And that has helped several families, especially those who come from long distances. Mm -hmm. We have a family currently with us from Sterling, Illinois, 160 miles away, and learning to take care of their medically fragile little girl. And they're just thrilled that they don't have to first have the expense of staying in a hotel and can be here uh, just right, just literally 30 seconds away from their daughter at any time. So it's good. And I'm sure one thing viewers are thinking is, well, how does this get paid for? Oh, well, we, we love donations. Of course. Always. Um, you know, uh, we do accept um, public aid. Uh, there is a, a mechanism of payment, but it never is really enough to cover the cost of uh, the high tech care and the staffing. So we are always um, so blessed by generous donations and, and folks who want to give up their time and their treasure. So that's how we do it. And we appreciate that. Absolutely. But, but the family should know we do we accept uh, insurance and Medicaid. We payments. do. We do. Um, insurance cases are, it, it, it's, it's very un unusual for us to see kids who have insurance and we're not really sure why that's happening but for the most part we, we will take anybody. We don't, you know, um, they don't have to have insurance. We can apply for Medicaid. We can talk to the state and do whatever we can to give them the funding that they need. And how long do children usually stay with us? Well, for transitional care, uh, about 120 days, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more, depending on what's going on with the child and what's going on with their home situation. And then respite care, about 14 days. 
And what are the ages of the young people who are at our Children's well, Health Care Center? Well, I think today we have one that's about a, mm, a month and a half old, and then we have one who is 16, so zero, uh, from birth to 21. That, that our children are, are welcome from absolutely. this age group? Absolutely, absolutely. We see, we see every age um, up to 21, and we see almost every diagnosis, every prognosis you can you can imagine. Some are, some are kids who will have um, a very uh, a very hard trajectory. You know that their illness and their um, handicap renders them um, on a on a path that it, it's a terminal illness, and so we we have to help families walk with that. So, and then we have some children like Dwayne who are hopefully going to go on and and live really productive lives and will we'll only be a spot in their memory at some point at some at some point and what what's a day like for a child in the program well we really try to make it as home-like as possible so um, we, they sleep in their own jammies um, they have their own um, blankets and pillows if they have them um, we try to have um, a day of activities we are so blessed we have uh, music therapy every day at 10 o'clock which is a great way for kids to get up and um, gather together um, usually it's in our nursery where it seems to be the, the favorite place and uh, sister Shirley is more than uh, you know, bubbling with excitement for, for our music therapy, but then we have also activities during the day. So maybe it's Play-Doh, maybe it's a craft, or maybe it's decorating a door, um, things like that. And for the little ones, it's always, or, or those who can't do it themselves, to do a task, it's always hand over hand. Um, maybe it's hand over hand bingo or um, reading. Story time is always very big, but we we are very, very much committed to having kids up and active this is not a long-term care facility where kids are, you know, um, not going to have activities. We are passionate about keeping them active and making sure they have a high quality of life. And if they are of school age? Um, that's a very good question. We do have several children who, who have been of school age. And in that case, we um, have their tutor come in. We help make that happen. Uh, sometimes it's early intervention who comes and works with a child and does therapies. But for the most part, we try to maintain as normal of a rhythm and situation that they would have at home. And if the children have a, a family doctor, they continue with that doctor, is that Absolutely. Right? And that is, I think, one of the biggest uh, fears that, that some docs have, is that they're going to lose control over their patient if they refer to the Children's Health Care Center, and that's absolutely not true. We all of, our, all of our children maintain their attending physician. That physician writes their orders, makes sure that, you know, everything is going along towards his plan or her, her plan. And then our doc, Dr. Carl Torin, is in the wings waiting in case somebody needs some extra help or need, we need a doc right away. Um, it's, it's a great um, collaboration. And with that, I think our program is going to have to end because our time has come to a close, but I want to thank you, Carrie Alani, thank for, you, sister. for talking about this wonderful program, the Children's Health Care Center, and I hope that our viewers see that this is one more way that we can talk about how precious our children are, and we are here to help. You are not alone. Thank you for being with us tonight.